Breaking news. Pink Blank is making a comeback. Oh my god, is that months? Suya? Do you like K-pop? Yes. What do you mean? Yes. My bias group just disbanded. Pop or, or flop? flop? Boys that sing new hear about worldwide Is this over for their careers? Okay. Three, two, one. Are, Are you ready, ready to be c c c canceled Hello, everyone. Welcome back to c c c canceled we are back, cancelled 2024. Let's go. This is the podcast where I'll be spilling tea about the latest K-pop news and my crappy takes on the ever-growing industry. My name is Kevin, and I'm the main host of the show. For updates, go check me out on Instagram at underscore Kev's T. That is spelled <laughs> K-E-V- <laughs> K-E-V-S-T-E-A. I'll be posting about the podcast and other things I'm working on, so please check me out. As you could tell, I'm kind of sick. Um, So... Story time. I've actually got sick back in the starting of the year. What a great way to start the year, am I right? And it's... <laughs> Let me just turn me up there. It's it's honestly just a mess. Like, I got this sickness out of the blue. Like, I think I was skating with my friends over the holidays, and then suddenly it's just like, oh, here you go. Here's <laughs> a cough that won't go away. Um, but I tested. It's not COVID, so that's good. But... <laughs> <laughs> this cough won't go away. I've taken halls. I've taken cough syrup. Like, nothing's freaking working. Um, but trust me when I say this, but like, my cough has gotten better, like, a lot better from the past few weeks. But, like, there was a certain point of time where I stopped coughing, but then it came back. Yay. What a great <laughs> what a great way to do a podcast. I mean, right? It's coughing into the mic. But regardless, whatever. Okay. So we're back. Um, I'm already short on time, so this is going to be probably a short podcast. I apologize for that. But I took a break for the holidays and for the first month of January. <laughs> if you didn't know, I'm still in university, so I needed some, some time for things to calm down a bit. Uh, and now we're finally here, and I'm so happy to be recording. I've got some amazing things to talk about for today's podcast. Um, but let me just start with this. <laughs> If you notice, if you're watching by video or even just the presence of the podcast so far, but I'm actually alone right now. Um, this is going to be one of my first podcasts that I'm recording alone. And I think that for Cancelled and uh, <laughs> for this podcast oncoming, I want to do some solo podcasts um, just because... I think I started this podcast with the intention of, oh, like, I get to talk to people about K-pop and be passionate about it. But I haven't really actually gotten a chance to just sit on myself with my own thoughts and just talk and ramble on for so long. Um, you know, this might not might be the most <laughs> interesting thing for you guys to listen to, but please bear with me. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so how am I doing? I told you how I'm doing. I'm fucking coughing. It's it's a mess. I'm free. I'm coughing. It's a mess, but whatever. It's okay. But some things going on right now, like uh, I'm actually still in university, like I said, and I'm actually applying to the TMU K-pop club. So I submitted my application for that. And I'm just hoping to get in so that I can help out with the team and get to know new people and get to meet some mutuals around for like my K-pop mutuals. Um. And I mentioned before, I have some goals for the podcast, which is, you know, I want to start solo podcasting more uh, just so that I could get my thoughts out and I could just do whatever I want. Uh, I want to start posting weekly, and I think I'm going to do that this semester. Um, however, with that being said, uh, that means the podcast episodes will probably be a bit shorter just because, you know, I don't want to exhaust all the K-pop content for just like every single episode am i right because you know there's only so much you could talk about like and and i don't want to get into like some petty news because <laughs> all i care about right now is you know just the music and <laughs> the music because <laughs> there's a hell oh my god i'm so excited to talk about this episode okay <sighs> shut up kevin okay uh, so let me go on a tangent now so i've been watching this new uh k-drama uh, I wouldn't say new. It's been ongoing for like the past month now. But I think you could guess already. But it's Marry My Husband. Oh my god. I freaking love this show so much. I started watching as soon as it came out. Uh, I think when I watched it, it was like four episodes out already. Um, but I've seen, uh, or what actually got me started to watching it is I saw a TikTok 
of one of the main leads tripping the main antagonist. So Jiwon was tripping Susumin to get revenge on her. And that was such an iconic moment. And the way that they portrayed it, um, you know, like the past, you know, J- Jiwon got tripped initially and then food fell on her. But then in the current time, oh, sorry, I should have gave you spoiler warnings. I'm so sorry about that. But yeah, spoiler warning. Um, and now in the present time, uh, you know, Jiwon has all the knowledge of what happened to her 10 years uh, ago. So from 2020, uh, 2013 to 2023. And so she's just like recollecting all the things or remembering all the things that happened uh, that Suman did to her in spite of her. And now she's just getting revenge on her slowly and slowly so that she can live the life that she wanted. And it's such a great, such a great story. Uh, I actually haven't read the manga, the manhwa. I had a friend who actually read the manhwa and like, it was pretty good from what she said. And I'm really excited to... um finish the series uh i will say one thing though uh the actor for suman i don't know her name but she is such a good actor uh i watched i think it was episode eight uh a few days ago uh and it was so good like jiwon and suman were like fighting for the flag thing and then like i don't know she does this thing when like she's irritated where like she twitches her eye and then like gives a smirk and like you know, usually, like, if I do it, it's going to be freaking cringe. But <laughs> I just did it to the camera. I'm so sorry. Um, But the way she does it, it's just so good. And, like, it really meets, like, that expectation of, like, evil, but, like, sinister. Because, you know, she, I think Jiwon, her, oh, sorry, I think Sumin herself knows that she's being evil. But, like, she's making it real obvious to Jiwon, who now, like, knows everything that happened, right? But... Oh my god, 10 out of 10 manhwa. I totally recommend reading it or watching it, whatever it is. Um, and it's honestly what I look forward to every week now, so please watch it. Um, and then moving on, I know we're going really fast, but because I just really want to talk about the main meat of the show. Uh, so actually, JYP got some debuts going on, so a debut and comeback. So Vicha, if you didn't know, I think I talked about Vicha in the first and second episode of the podcast. Um, they were in the JYP survival show. I don't even call it what it's called. I think uh, A2K. Yeah, A2K. And, you know, the girls actually finally debuted with an actual comeback song instead of, like, the ones that they did from A2K. So they came, they debuted with Girls of the Year. And, oh my god, I, I love it a lot. <laughs> I, this is not the song review for the podcast, but... I really like it because it's on brand to their image, first of all. And also, it's because it's just a, such a great debut song for them. Because they came from, honestly, like, they came from nothing to something, like, really fast. And the way that they're debuting at the start of the year, it's just the cherry on top. Because I think I think with this song and hopefully the future releases, releases that are to come, I think they're going to do a really great job in the industry. And I hope... I don't know, like, for them, like, I don't know about their audience still. Like, they're uh, promoting to uh, K-pop fans, but they're still singing in English. Uh, So I feel like that's going to be, like, the thing for them where, you know, they promote in Korea, but then, like, they try to do out things internationally because I feel like they don't necessarily have the largest Korean audience. And especially with JYP, I feel like their company and their artists don't really cater towards um the Korean fan base as much anymore. So that's really interesting. Uh and then for Itsy's, uh Itsy came back with Untouchable. I'm untouchable. I'm still learning the dance. Uh it's a really good song. I like it. It's the first comeback with a member missing. Uh Leah is actually one of my biases and you know it's sad to see that, you know, mental health got to her. And I think that's uh an interesting discussion to have in future episodes uh, or maybe i'll even talk about it right now but you know like k-pop is is really toxic and uh i think etsy especially had kind of a really bumpy road in the past year or two you know with coming from a high from loco and you know their previous releases before that and then they suddenly drop sneakers and then you know everyone knows the hate they got with sneakers but i don't think it was that bad um but what should I say? Um, where is it going with that? 
But after they came back with sneakers, and then sorry, after sneakers they released. I think it was um, what was it? Crazy in Love? No, not Crazy in Love. Cheshire, Cheshire. Uh, and then like Cheshire came, and then uh, Bet on Me came. I forgot. Oh, with Cake. And now they're back with Untouchable. And I feel like with those releases, like, to me, they're kind of losing their identity a bit. Like, I'm not the biggest ITZY stan ever, but uh, I did love their releases when, uh, you know, pre-sneakers. And even, I, I do like sneakers, but I think they wavered their identity so much that they've lost, like, all their casual listeners and they lost, like, also a bunch of their... Uh, core audience their fans um so it's really tough to it's really sad to see and i i, I bet leah is like thinking about that too and the, the, the whole group is probably thinking about that too um but i did think untouchable like met my expectations um there were some parts that i felt like could have been mixed better or, or like some parts didn't flow with one one or the other but Either way, it was still a pretty good song. Um, I have on my playlist. I do like it. Hopefully, it stays on my playlist for a while. But I think, <laughs> you know, with with Itzy now, it, it's hard to say. But yeah. Um, oh, speaking of Itzy, actually, uh, they're actually going on tour, and I'm really excited. Uh, I I haven't considered if I want to go or not yet. Um, but I'll I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. Hopefully, Leah is gonna be back on tour. But if not, I'm probably not gonna go. Uh, but yeah, so that was that. That's all I wanted to say about, you know, just catching up, me on a tangent. <laughs> I think I'm going to call this segment, like, Kevin's Tangents. Because, you know, usually I take about, talk about K-pop news if I have a guest in. But if I'm by myself, like, I don't want to talk about no news. I don't want to go on a tangent. <laughs> okay, so for the main event, y'all, today, as I'm recording this, it's January 29th. It's 2.45 p.m. That means G-Idol's second full album, 2, has dropped. Ow! <laughs> I've been waiting for this release for so long. Why did Cube have to hold it from me for so long? Oh my god, Cube, I hate you. Okay, so they dropped it today. I woke up at like... <laughs> I actually woke up at 3 a.m. today. Or last night uh, but then I just fell asleep because I knew I had class today I knew I had to you know keep my <laughs> sleep schedule intact because you know school's still going on and everything so I, you know, I woke up at three I had to pee and then I wanted to stay up until four but then I just fell asleep uh, but then I woke up I made sure to wake up at like 8 a.m to watch this comeback and you know I'm gonna insert my reaction right now so if you're watching this on YouTube go look at that hi <sighs> Ignore my messy hair, but like, Giada just came back. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Gagged. Oh my god, the thumbnail is already gagging me. Holy shit, oh my god, okay, okay, okay. Two minutes and 41 seconds. Oh, I wish it was longer, but you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> oh, it's gay. <laughs> Didn't have to eat so hard with that set. Okay, bitch, the budget, but everything. Oh my god. That's only one playlist. Oh my god. Okay, bye. <laughs> so yeah, that was my reaction. I just kept the highlight of hearts in. I hope you guys enjoyed that. But when I tell you my my jaw dropped to the floor. I I heard that the budget for this MV was actually like 1.1 billion Korean won. So I was oh my god, that's <laughs> insane and to put that in perspective that's like i think it's like around 800k in usd so oh my, oh my god they really blew the budget with this and i'm really happy for them because they deserve like the best and you know you know with like g idol they have they usually have such like a strong message in their music videos and to have that budget to tell the story i think really made this mv like really shine out but i'll get into that so the title track, Super Lady, dropped, and I was mm, on the floor, dead. Okay, period, slide. I'll break the song one by one. So firstly, uh, oh, also, if you haven't listened to the song, what are you doing? I'm a g fan. I'm a Neverland. Watch the song right now. Listen to the song right now. Oh my god. 10 out of 10 song. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, okay, I'm kidding. I'm exaggerating. But okay, so intro, okay, that was actually a 10 out of 10. Uh, so, 
I love like the <laughs> this is so iconic but also like so cheesy but also like so second gen on theme like because that's what they're doing right they're kind of going on like the second gen revival theme but like the car engine starts and then there's that like bass it's so good and then oh my god Soyeon's voice is so powerful. I am a Tom Super. <laughs> oh my god, I love it so much. They so slayed for that. I love that they're trying something new for this comeback. <laughs> usually, I've noticed that with um, Soyeon's writing, usually she has like either Minnie or Soyeon starting the song. If it's Minnie starting a song, that means you know it's gonna be like really like poppy and like that's gonna be like the main thing for her. And if it's Soyeon starting the song, that means it's, like, usually, like, a really, like, strong, strong song. Um, and this definitely, like, brought the strong. <laughs> um, so Soyeon came in with her, like, really belty vocals in the beginning. Love that part. And then Minnie's rap that came into it afterwards, like, ooh. Like, that, the way they mix it was so good. Because after she sang, like, I think, uh, I am a god lady or... I never die, Pachi. Something follow me. And then it went like do 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 biggie biggie boy 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 and like with her dreamy vocals. But not just like <laughs> that was such a terrible explanation. <laughs> um but the way like Minnie's vocals come in, like usually she starts off with like the the, the dreamy like hey you more bony. But this time she came in with a dreamy rap, which I think like a lot of people will probably underestimate that just because like um it's the rapping so they don't pay attention too much since it's like going faster but like i really like that part uh i love Minnie's voice so much especially when used for the intro 10 out of 10 great job soyan great job Minnie. um <clears throat> and then moving on to like the pre-chorus and like the continue the vor verses like mm, mm, Mian. <laughs> I did not know I needed red hair Mion until she debuted with red hair Mion. If you're watching this, I'm assuming that you might have seen the concept photos for it. <laughs> They're so pretty. Oh my god. Oh my god. Especially <laughs> you Oh my god, you guys have to see like that that winter concept photo that they take. Oh my. <laughs> I'm Oh my god, I'm straight for <laughs> Um, and the way I see it, um, you know, going from the, the verse to the pre-chorus to the chorus, um, I, I was not expecting that drop for the chorus. Like, I thought, I knew, I felt like it was going to be an anti-drop, but I didn't expect that kind of anti-drop, where it's just like, lady, lady, you know? And then with that being said, like, I think the first part of the song, like, the, maybe like the first minute was like, really solid. And then for me, like, it kind of like, you know, got repetitive towards like, the second part, and then like the outro, I think was one of their weaker outros in my opinion. Um, but I still liked it, especially um, Soyan's rap. I, I feel like oh, the, the spin between uh, I think it was Oogie singing, and then it was Soyan's like really fast rap. But it was so short. Like I wish she held that rap for like just like a bit longer, cause I think that would have like not only like made the song longer, but also like put on that twist, cause I feel like I needed like a break from like the really energetic like bass and then like from the for the rap you know usually they like go they go really simple with like a simple like kick or like bass hit um but then like it, it was only like what like it felt like two bars or like something like that and or like two lines and oh my god but then me the the Mion following afterwards that like I oh my god I love the way they contrast their voices so much. Like, oh, it's so... Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> I'm, like, actually going in crazy just talking about this. But, yeah, so... And then the chorus and then the outro again. Like I said, I feel like the outro was a bit weaker, in my opinion. Uh, For me, like, out of the three outros that they've been doing so far, like, with Tomboy, Queen Card, and Nude, I think Tomboy was obviously the strongest just because of that instrumental, like... I can't whistle. Um, and then, like, uh, Queen Card for me was second because of, like, the chanty. But, like, in that case, like, the chant works. Um, same with Nude, right? But I I think, like, 
and I just think the the rhyme scheme is like better for those three. But for this one, uh, I think like the rhyme scheme like kind of didn't work because they kind of like use sir as a way to repeat it, uh, repeat it, and like the super like super power, super natural, super uh super woman. And then super blank. I think it like it didn't work too well in my opinion. So like, uh, for me, I've just been like ever since the song came out, I've just been like replaying just like the first minute of the song because I think that's like the part that shined the most. But I liked it. it. It's pretty good. Um, okay, I have to go fast. But so moving down to the B sides, I think the B sides this time around were like on the more weaker side but to be fair like i've only listened to each song like maybe tw- once or twice uh cuz you know i had to record the podcast so uh but i think over time if i keep playing it more and more i think i would uh, definitely enjoy it more um my favorites on this track were definitely fate um also like the korean title i think it was like nanin nappen something and then uh, Minnie's tracks are really good. Like Vision and Seven Days uh, were <laughs> one of my favorites. Uh, when the audio snippet came out, I actually had a prediction that like I probably would like uh, Seven Days the most. And I was right. Seven Days is definitely the best. But for me, I think I was most let down by Doll. Because I really liked the Doll snippet. But then like, it just it didn't have that same energy that I had when it first played for me. But... I'll keep listening it. I'll see if I like it in the future. Um, I'll give you guys an update for next podcast about my thoughts about it. Just because it's like, you know, it's so fresh in my head, right? And then wife. <clears throat> I cook cream soup. Taste is Coco Roco. <laughs> I did not like the song at first. Okay, I think that goes to say for everyone. But then as I kept listening to it, I was like, wait. Why am I moving my head? <laughs> Why is this kind of a bop? <laughs> but yeah, so Wife was great. But I think for the overall criticism of the album and like the songs, I think it's fair now when I say like people say the songs are too short, which they definitely were. Uh, when I first saw the lengths of the tracks, like t- they were all like two minute and 30 seconds. And I was like, oh my God, like, girl, this is like a full album. I know you guys produce your own stuff, but like you guys need to like, at least make the songs a bit longer so that the like the playtime is longer. Kind of like I Never Die. Uh, like I really liked I Never Die because the album was so cohesive and I feel like I got enough of each song to get like the story and the message that they're saying. But for this track, for this album, like since the songs are so short, I feel like each song has not been fully realized enough. Like some of them, like they needed like a bridge and a proper outro to go out on especially like revenge and doll like they kind of just they, you know they had their two minutes and then there's like okay we're done and i'm just like oh that's it <laughs> um i know with the trend of like making songs shorter so that they can you know <laughs> get uh more plays and everything but I, like it's so sad to see just because i think these songs could have been really good had they had had they had, had they had <laughs> uh, a longer runtime to like fully realize the song. So that I think I was like quite disappointed uh, this time around. Um, but overall, I think the comeback was solid. Um, Super Ladies a bop, and I think it's gonna be runway status for me. But for now, like it's a head bop. Um, but I'm sure as I play it more and more, it's gonna be like a runway status, especially like that first minute. Like if they kept the energy and like how good the first minute was onto like the second portion of the song I think definitely runway status instantly um cause I know for like for me like queen card instant st- <laughs> instant runway status but like yeah so I think I need to wrap it up now uh I have only like a few more minutes left so I'm gonna say my spicy question I'm just gonna answer it like just like m- my small thoughts and then I'm gonna wrap it up alright so now moving on to the spicy question uh i don't have much time left but uh i'll try to give my go at it so i think as a g idol stan neverland i need to ask myself how do i feel about soyan's writing and her english lyrics for me i think that it's honestly like not the worst thing ever like 
I've had to have I have many instances where I needed to um like look at the lyrics for a bunch of songs, not just K-pop songs, but also like Western music as well. Because like with all music, I think like you know you gotta look at the lyrics to under fully understand and like what uh, the artist is trying to like compel. And I think with Jeanna, like <clears throat> the way Soyeon's writing her English and also like how she's pronouncing it, I think she's like obviously doing it on purpose because. You know, we've seen tracks from her. Like, they literally just released an uh, English EP that, um, you know, <laughs> it's an English EP, and, like, her pronunciation was actually, like, good there. So, I I, I don't know. Like, I think it's probably just a marketing strategy. Uh, I would love to elaborate this on more, but I am running out of time, so I do have to wrap it up. Um, so, please, let me know, guys, like, what you thought of the solo uh, episode. I know it's a bit short. I could have went longer if I had, like, everything set up faster but unfortunately i had some techno technical difficulties um but yeah like let me know if you like the solo podcast uh let me know what you want to talk what, what you want me to see talk about in the future and yeah so remember to check me out on instagram and i will see you guys later bye bye stream two stream super lady